Russia-Ukraine war live, Russia claims to have gained control over 97% of Luhansk region, as the Russia-Ukraine war continues to intensify beyond 104 days, invading troops pounded areas in Kyiv on Sunday morning. Russian forces also flew cruise missiles at a critically low level over South Ukrainian NPP. Meanwhile, Russian President Vladimir Putin issued staunch warnings against the U.S. supply of long-range missiles to Ukraine. Russia claims to have captured 97% of Luhansk region. Russia claimed that it has occupied large swaths of eastern Ukraine after a relentless, weeks-long barrage and the recent deployment of more troops. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shuigu said Moscow's forces have control of 97% of the Luhansk region. Russia has declared that fully capturing the entire Donbas, which includes the Donetsk and Luhansk regions and where Russia-backed separatists have fought the Ukrainian government since 2014, is its main goal in the invasion of its neighboring country which be 24. The region recently has been bearing the brunt of the Russian onslaught. It's not clear whether Russia would try to expand its offensive elsewhere in Ukraine if it takes the Donbas. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov warned Monday that if the West provides Ukraine with long range rockets capable of reaching Russian territory, Moscow will respond by pressing its offensive deeper into Ukraine. Russia claims to have sent nearly 600 conscripts to fight in Ukraine. In the latest development, the Russian authorities have admitted to sending conscripts to Ukraine amid the ongoing war. According to the military prosecutor of Russia's Western District, as many as 600 conscripts were dispatched to fight in Ukraine. Earlier, Russian President Vladimir Putin had stated that the country will not be sending conscripts and reservists to Ukraine. Russia claims to have 6,489 Ukrainian prisoners of war. In the latest update, Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shuigu claimed that the total number of Ukrainian prisoners of war is 6,489. According to reports, there could be more than just military personnel among them as occupiers often kidnap civilians. However, the Ukrainian authorities are yet to comment on the numbers claimed by the Russian defense minister. Ukraine accuses Russian forces of mining routes of Ukrainian troops towards Rubas. In the latest update, the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine has accused Russian forces of remote mining on their route towards Rubas and in Luhansk. According to Ukraine, the Russian forces have focused their main efforts on the continuous attack on Izium and Slavyansk. The Ukrainian general staff of the armed forces has said that the Russian forces continue to keep the occupied borders in Kharkiv and have been preventing the advancement of troops of you. The general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine has claimed that the Russian side continues to conduct mortar shelling of Ukrainian troops in the Sumy region. According to Ukraine, Russian troops continue firing at Ukrainian soldiers in Bazalovka, Roskivka, and Grusuvaha. In addition, Russian soldiers launched airstrikes using planes and helicopters in the Donetsk region. Got the Ukrainian general staff of the armed forces accused Russian troops of launching a missile strike on Mikhailovka and added that combat between Russian and Ukrainian troops continues in Severodonetsk. In the latest update, the Ukrainian general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine claimed that Russian forces using artillery and military aviation made offensive actions towards Lazov and Bielokrinitsia and noted that the Russian side was unsuccessful. The Ukrainian troops have repelled 10 attacks by Russian forces in the past 24 hours and air defense units of Ukraine shot down two Warlington unmanned aircraft. Ukraine rejects IAEA plan to send team to Russian-occupied Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Ukraine state nuclear company Energotom, on Tuesday, rejected an International Atomic Energy Agency IAEA, plan to send a team to the Russian-occupied Zaporizhia nuclear power plant ZNPP, in so The statement came a day after IAEA Director General Rafael Mariano Grossi stated that the agency is looking to send an expert mission to the Zaporizhian NPP, the largest nuclear plant. We're working to send an expert mission to Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. 
the biggest NPP in Europe is currently disconnected from at IORC safeguards communications systems. Ukraine requested us, we will go there, sick. Mariupol and Berdyansk ports ready to ship grain, claims Russian Defense Ministry. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shuigu claimed that the seaports of Mariupol and Berdyansk are functioning normally and are ready to ship grain. The seaport of Berdyansk has also started working. On behalf of the Supreme Commander-in-Chief, we are ready to load grain at Berdyansk and Mariupol ports, Shuigu added, as per the TASS news that Ukraine in talks with other countries about security guarantees for its ships. Ukraine's president is asking for a secure corridor for Ukrainian vessels to be able to ship out the grain and prevent food shortages in Africa addressing a press conference. Vladimir Zelensky said that Kyiv is in talks with countries like Turkey and the United Kingdom about security guarantees for Ukrainian ships. It is important for us that there is a security corridor. That the fleet of this or that country ensures the shipping of the grain. If now we have 22 to 25 million tons blocked there, in the fall we might have 75 million tons. What are we going to do? He asked. That's why we can't do without the ports. The issue of blocked grain will be on the agenda on Wednesday during Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov's visit. Ankara is involved in efforts by the United Nations to reach an agreement for the shipment of Ukrainian grain amid an escalating food crisis. U.S. vows to do everything to put Ukraine in position of strength against Russia. The United States will do everything it can do to put Ukraine in a position of strength in face of Russian aggression, White House Press Secretary Karina Jean Pierre asserted on Monday. As the battle for Kyiv's sovereignty spiraled into its fourth month, Jean Pierre stressed that a strong position was a prerequisite for negotiations with the Russian Federation. While she stopped short of spilling details of U.S. support, the official emphasized that it was Russia's aggression on Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. They, Ukrainians, are fighting for their democracy. And so, we're going to do everything that we can to put them in a position of strength so that they can defend themselves. And if there is an opportunity for them to negotiate, they would be able to do that in a position of strength, White House Press Secretary Karina Jean-Pierre said at a briefing. Russia lost nearly 31,360 soldiers since onset of war, Ukraine. In its latest operational update, the Ukrainian Defense Ministry claimed that Russia has lost nearly 31,360 soldiers, 3,416 armored personnel vehicles, APV, 1,390 tanks, 694 artillery systems and 207 multiple launch rocket systems, MLRS, and at least 96. In addition, the invaders also lost as many as 2,405 vehicles and fuel tanks, 553 unmanned aerial vehicles, UAV, 212 aircraft, 177 helicopters, 125 cruise missiles, and 53 special equipment. Russia plans to replace city sign in Ukrainian with one in Russian, Mariupol City Council. The Mariupol City Council claimed that Russia is planning to replace the city sign in Ukrainian with the one in Russian. Footage published by the council shows utility workers near the concrete name of the city at its entrance, as someone behind the camera announces the upcoming replacement. Mikolaev comes under Russia's attack. On the morning of June 7, 2022, the Russian military opened fire on the city of Mikolaev. Hostilities are underway in Donetsk region, Luhansk region, and Kherson region, stated Ukraine form citing a consolidated report by military and civil administrations on the situation across U Russia mining territory on route of Ukraine's army offensive. Ukraine's armed forces have said on Tuesday that in the Kharkiv region, the Russians are mining the territory on the route of the offensive of the Ukrainian army towards the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine posted on Facebook. In Kharkiv direction, the enemy's main efforts are focused on holding the occupied frontiers, border areas north of Kharkiv city, 
and restraining the advance of our troops. The enemy remotely delivers mines on the route of the offensive of our troops towards Rubishna.